So joining us today, we're very excited to have Miko Yuck, who is the founder of the VI Dashboard Formula Training Series. Fun, fun. And uh, she had quite a few sessions yesterday with a lot of people, so it's really <laughs> great to have her to come out here at, at our own booth at this stage and help us out. She's going to talk about BI Dashboard Storylines. I'm sorry, BI Storyboards, right? Yep, 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 yep. And We're going to have some fun today. So, Miko, I'll leave it with you. Okay, so how is Thank everybody you. doing? I see some repeats here. Who, is the, who saw me yesterday? Oh, good, okay. Well, basically, first of all, how did, did anybody party last night? I partied in my bed. Was it fun? I'm really hoping to do something tonight. I just, I went to bed, so I was like, that's it. Um, anyway, so I'm glad you guys are here. I hate being on the podium, as you know, so I'm going to try to do this my best. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit, for those who weren't here a little bit today, you can skip the intro, you can go to the next slide, a little bit today about BI user adoption. Um, any of you remember me yesterday talking about BI storyboards? I just like went over it really quickly. So what SAP experts did is I actually, they asked me to do an in-depth session on there because BI storyboards are something that are new to people. So I'm hoping in this very short session to shine light on it. And just remind me, I have 30 minutes? 45. 45, okay, so we also, if you guys are here yesterday, you know I'm very interactive, so you just ask your questions. I don't wanna be up here just hearing myself talk. Are we good? Yep, okay, good. All right, so what we're gonna learn this session is a lot of times, I spoke to you guys yesterday, that people just like to run into designing. When we talked about doing a Crayola thing, I just want to start designing immediately. So one of the things I'm going to talk about is BI storyboards, okay? And it's interesting because when I was online researching storyboarding, in our industry, storyboarding is usually taught to be prototyping. It's not prototyping. The way that we teach storyboards are completely different from a prototype. A storyboard is actually an outline of all the dashboards and reports that you're going to build in your entire project. Is that clear to everybody? So it's not a, it's not a visual, we're not adding colors. It literally says, I remember yesterday, for those who weren't here, yesterday we did this scoping. I remember I told you guys that you allow the users to give all their KPIs. Right? And I told you that can get pretty extreme. It can get to 200, 300. Well, what you'll find when you do the purging process is you'll find that you're going to end up with multiple dashboards and reports a lot of times. So the idea is that you're not forced to shove everything on. And the main reason for that is a lot of times you're going to have a lot of audiences. Does that make sense to everybody? So for that reason, one of the things that we do before we even get to, to drawing anything out is actually building out a, a BI storyboard. So go ahead next, Scott. Um, so as I said, a BI storyboard is a series of reports and dashboards. And one important thing I breezed over yesterday is that every dashboard and particularly your storyboard has to tell an entire story, right? So it has to have a current state, which is where I am now. Ironically, most people do that correct. Do you guys agree? Most people can put up a chart, put a line, and say, here's where I am now. No, go back. Sorry. Go back, Scott. Um, the second thing is a trend, which is how I got here. And honestly, most people, this is 90% of what they actually develop. Most people put up just a regular chart with a bar and a line and they say, here's how I got here. Then you have your forecast, which tells you if I continue at my current rate, where am I going to end up? And then last but not least, you have your what if, which is what can I change to meet my goals? Here's the issue with this. Most people try to stick this into one dashboard. Everybody agree with me? It is just too much, okay? A lot of times, the reason what, what we teach people is this actually needs to be your storyboard. So for instance, your current state, this could be for a different set of audience. You could have executives, you could have VPs, you could have sales reps. Do not build a one shoe fits all dashboard, guys. If you build that, nobody's gonna use it, okay? Also, something I didn't tell you guys yesterday, your dashboard should not have more than two audiences. I did not mention that yesterday. If you are having more than two audiences, and when I say two audiences, let me explain that too. HR, should not be on the same dashboard with logistics. Everybody understand what I'm saying? They at least need to correlate. I get so annoyed when I go into companies and I see that there's an HR financial tab, IT networking, you know, the shoe sale and every other thing on the dashboard. Don't do this, it's a problem. If I am an HR person and I get onto a landing page for sales, I'm not coming back. Furthermore, if I'm an HR person, think about what I'm gonna do even if I land on the HR tab. What does a natural human being do? 
I'm going to go look at sales. Do you agree? That, that's what we do. Forget what we came here to do. We're just curious. So when you're building these, I usually tell people no more than two audiences. That's why I'm saying in your storyboard, you're going to have multiple facets. But more importantly, make sure that there's some correlation. Um, the other thing a storyboard does is it helps you to identify what's going to be a dashboard versus a report. It names all of your items and it goes over your workflow. And then I think the most important thing is it has a compelling name. Next. Okay, here's a good example of a simple BI storyboard. Executive sales app, these are our dashboards for executives, right? Simple enough. Sales team tracker. And then I want to talk a little bit about the name and though we're going to get into that. On executive sales app, there's a drill down for revenue deep dive, location analysis. On the sales team tracker, you have top 10 performers, quick wins, and team target analysis. So let me ask you the question, did any of these names stick out to anybody? Any of them stick out? Which ones? Deep dive, right? That stuck out. It was the word deep dive. Anybody else? Which one, Roderick? Quick wins. Quick wins. So what you notice here is that the next thing, remember I said a compelling name and I'll talk about this. I said it yesterday, I'm going to say it again. Please stop naming your stuff these boring names. Executive scorecard is boring. I don't know if you know that or not. It is freaking boring. Go to bed. Sales report is boring as hell, okay? There's a million sales reports in your launch pad right now. Do you realize this? So if you went online and searched, it comes up with everything else. Now, a good example is while I put sales team tracker, we developed a report that was interesting. We called it the sales bonus hitter. What do you guys think about this? It was a success. So what ended up happening was the manager for sales, he basically told us our team needs to hit their targets, right? And we were thinking, well, what could we do? And by the way, we had like a baseball, you know, we had a whole like hit the goal type of thing. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't show the picture here. But you probably noticed too, as I said, performers, quick wins. We use things that when people come in, without us having to explain it, they know what the value is. Focus on the value add. A sales report is boring. Next. Okay, so the reason you create a storyboard is for three reasons. One is to confirm what you're actually building. Two is to reduce scope creek, right? So think about it. We gather requirements and then we build a single dashboard in silo, right? What are the end users thinking? Where's the rest of my stuff? Do you agree? So they keep asking you these questions and they keep going, what about my web reports? What about my crystal report, right? They keep asking over and over again. When you build out a BI storyboard, you, they have an idea of exactly what the entire lines, landscape is going to look like. Is everybody clear on that? So part of the reason you build that is to get away from people constantly asking you, where's my reports? Because it's going to happen. The other thing is, so in BI, we are essentially in the marketing business to some extent. Okay, guys? You probably noticed I talk about naming your stuff, your emails. One of the things that you want to happen with your storyboard is if it's exciting, you want the users to socialize it. So you kind of want them to keep passing it around. It's a thing you want to go viral, right? That's why you need to name it well. So socialization is really important. And the issue is that if you don't have a storyboard, there's nothing to socialize until you prototype. Does that make sense to everybody? So if you were in my session yesterday, you build this out right after you scope and before you start prototyping. Because what you want to show them is that the timeline I gave you to deliver this is not just a dashboard. There's a lot of confusion with users. They're like, why are you telling me this is going to take me so many weeks? No, you're getting an entire storyboard solution. That's why storyboards are important. So I want to dive in a little bit as to what this is and just help you guys understand how to build your storyboard. When you use the BI Blueprint Sheet, which by the way, guys, I sent it this morning. I hope it will be up. If it isn't, a lot of people email me. I'm sending you the link. Sorry about that. Um, for the BI Blueprint, I want to just focus again and spend a little bit of time on how you think this through and the way it's developed, right? Because the big thing about the BI storyboard is that I get it's very bad when you're working with users and your lingo is only the words Webby and, Dash and Excelsius. I always tell people, when I walk into a customer and someone says to me, I need three Excelsius dashboards and it's the business person, I look at IT like this. Do you know why? If they're more educated on the technology names than you, you got a problem. Do you guys understand this? Don't use the technology names at all. 
you know, SAP is famous for this, right? SAP, they like to put, you know, dashboards. Don't, listen to me today. We're changing the language. When you speak to business users, do not say business objects. Everybody with me? Stay away. Do not say webby. You're developing a report and you're developing a dashboard. Does everybody understand why this is important? Because I sit down and I have business users tell me, well, I, I'm expect they come and they go, I want a dashboard in Excelsius. Okay, why couldn't I give you one in Webby? Webby has charts, right? But what I realize is that the people who are working with them have educated them so much, even down to the ETL, they actually know what data services is. Guys, this is a problem. This will bite you for a very long time. Okay, so I want to emphasize that one of the things that we teach, even the, that's why we build a storyboard, is we try to get away from teaching people what Webby, Crystal, Explorer, some of the users know the names better than we do. I've actually went into companies and the, the business users knew what Explorer did and how it worked better than IT did. Do we see a problem? You know what that does? It, they come to you and they say, I want two explorers, you know, I want access here, I want three dashboards, ten reports. It'll never come to an end. And the best part is when you don't give it to them, they're going to try to do it themselves. One of the things that we do with our report names, and I talked shortly about this yesterday, is we consider it to be marketing. So when people come into Launchpad or their mobile or whatever, we create names that are compelling. So I'm, I'm thinking in my head, we had a few names and I had a whole sheet with, with names. We had customers, we had call center talk time reduction. We had um, supply chain streamliner. We, we use basically what you have to do is whatever the core element or value of your BI storyboard is, you need to use that word. Is everybody clear on that? And you need to keep using those words. Now, listen, don't put out a quick win report that doesn't have any wins. Let's just be clear now. Don't do a fake and bake. If you put out quick wins, when it opens up, it needs to go boom, 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 win number one, win number two, win number three. Is everybody clear on that? When you start doing the stuff I showed you, the business users are going to go into what we call shock. So what, remember yesterday I taught you guys, when you actually ask them to define what they need, they're going to go into shock, right? A lot of them aren't going to come back, and then you're going to sit in a the room, they're going to sit in the chair, and you're going to hear stupid stuff like, I just know it when I see it. Okay, here's the, here's the problem. We need to see it too. So if you have a baby, you go away, what the heck happens, right? But we hear that too often. People have a false sense of job security. So when you hear interesting stuff like that, for those who were here yesterday, you need to give them over the blueprint and tell them if you could just define it, I appreciate it. Otherwise, I'm not building this. Another thing I didn't teach yesterday is some organizations are not ready for dashboards. I did not have time to go over this yesterday. I have a guy in my class from the US Navy. And some of you, a lot of you are encountering this situation. And he said to me, Miko, I sit with the business users and I am asking them to please help me to understand the KPIs. This guy tells me he doesn't have a single KPI, but he's managing our unit. Sorry to bang on the government, but now we know why we're broke. And I'll give you, I have a lot of good government stories because I started out with NCIS and CIA, all a little good stuff, right? And so he said, look, I go to the guy and he has nothing to give me. He can't even tell me what he's looking at. You know what I said to him? It's simple. You're not ready for a dashboard. How many of you have said no? Anybody here able to say no? Did you say no? Did you say it nicely? And what did the users tell you? Well, we'll have to what? Okay, and then what did you do? Right, how do you know it? Right. So, so one of the things that I teach people as well is, if you cannot get the information you need to build what you need, you have to learn how to say no. Because failure, let me tell you something, failure stinks, okay? And when you fail on a dashboard, it's even worse. So I describe in my sessions a dashboard, and, and you won't forget this analogy. Um, I don't know about you guys, right? We all had, anybody had like an ugly, juicy pimple in high school that just stayed for the school dance? Right? It just, it just picked the school dance and it wouldn't go away. That is what an ugly, bad dashboard is like. And when it doesn't go away for the dance and you show up, that is your BI project. It doesn't go away. And the worst part is, for some valid reason, people don't forget the person that built the garbage can. 
Does everybody understand that? So if you feel like you are failing, if, if you're in a project right now and I've set off red flags, run back and tell them, I want to get promoted at the end of the year. I don't want to do this. Is everybody clear with me? This is not funny, guys. Gartner said that seven out of 10 BI projects are failing. Are you guys aware of that? Do you know what that means? It means that this whole conference, business users think this is a waste of money to some extent. They're like, every year we send brilliant people to this conference and they come back and put garbage out. Are you guys realizing this? This is not funny. And Gartner said it's gonna get worse. Go read the Gartner report. So it's seven out of 10, that means for all you guys working here, 70% of you are building something that's gonna fail. What happens when it fails? We lose credibility, right? Let me tell you what else is happening if you're in IT. We have seen this year in particular, CFOs and CEOs not giving IT money and giving all the money to the business users. Anybody see that happen in organizations? Do you guys know why this is a problem? They don't like data governance and they don't want to pay for it. This is a bit of a problem. Any business users, where are you? Data governance, are you aware of what data governance is? Are you okay with data governance? You're getting there. Data governance, how do you feel about it, sir? The business owns it's not IT. Okay, so you hear from business users here, one, and I assume you know it's a long, drawn-out process for lots of money, and if you don't see a report, it's basically crap, right? That's what I get from business people. You gotta see stuff, you don't see anything. So one of the things that we teach people is, we have to make sure, and, I, and I, it's funny, I saw online someone posted an article, probably because I was talking about it, about IT, don't feel bad. If you're in IT, I'm not trying to tell you don't feel bad. I'm trying to tell you you're going to become obsolete if you don't fix this stuff. So I don't want any IT person, I, again, I have a computer engineering degree, I program in 15 languages, okay? I came from an IT background. I started with ABAP and IBM SAS for all the IT folks. So I'm not IT stupid. However, I go into IT teams and I feel really bad because they're handicapped. They don't know what to do, right? They sit down and tell the business people, we have an ETL project to bring all the data in for the next year and a half. What the beep does that have to do with me? That's the question. What, in a year and a half, my problems have changed. I've gained 15 pounds, my husband left me and I have another kid. <laughs> what the heck does ETL, pro I'm serious. I have someone walked up to me yesterday and said, we started our implementation six months ago and we're two years in. Do you know what I thought? I'm going to check with you in a year because there's probably 1,200 Tableau reports being built right now. And if you think that's different, you're sleeping through this. Do you guys understand this? So understand that what I'm saying is I'm not knocking the data, guys. I have downloaded in the back my favorite ETL guy in the world. He knows what I'm saying. I'm just saying that ETL is important, guys. It's just not important to business users. They don't care. The name of your technology, keep it to yourself. That's very important. Also, your long time frames, um, I taught this and um, I don't know if I have any IBM here or Accenture. Um, I'm not, to, please don't get offended. I love all the big fives, we do business with them. But I had to tell my IBM partners, the year of the eight month dashboard delivery is over. Are you guys listening? You're gonna get a dashboard in eight months, eight months is dead. In eight months, the problem has changed. If you cannot put something out in 30 to 60 days, guys, it's over. Do you guys, are you guys taking this away? Because I'm not joking. By the time you put it out, that, and people wonder when they put it out, why are the business users not using it? They already built their own stuff, guys. Eight months? Are you serious? Oh, sorry, Scott, am I on time? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I could talk all day. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, do we have any questions? Well, we have a few more minutes here. How, how many minutes do we About have? 10 minutes. Oh, wow. That sucks. <laughs> okay. Any guys, hit me with good questions. Let's go. I'll just give you the mic so we can record the questions. Oh, anybody want to share their experiences? That would be great. I usually have prizes, but I didn't bring them. I'm so sorry. I usually have iPads and stuff. I apologize. You should not let you sleep anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I gave away like, what, uh, about $2,000 in prizes last week. I'm so sorry. I usually come with prizes to give to people. I, maybe I'll go take care of that before the next session. <laughs> Anyways, um, anybody have experiences or, or I, anything they want to share? I mean, I want to hear from you guys. I see you shaking your head, so I know you guys have seen some of this stuff. And I'm hoping after this session you go back and do something differently. 
So you know those emails with a subject, Excelsius dashboard is almost ready? Anybody send out an email like that or web reports come in? 3,000 web reports, take web reports out. Put the sexy sizzle name. Say, listen, your deep dive analysis is on the way. We gotta get, you know, guys are so boring. I don't know what, I mean, I, I go in and like executives, like I tell them, I had this one executive, we produced a 360 view. He went marketing it all over the place. You guys listen to me? 300, we had an executive 360 view. He was so excited. He kept telling people, guess what? I'm getting 360 view of my organization. Yeah, this team is building this thing that's gonna let me see everything as 360 view. He just kept running with it. We didn't say executive scorecard, everybody has one. Anyways, with that said, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I'm very interested in your storyboard line here. Sure. And with the 30-day development process, how much time do you spend on a storyboard? Um, so if we have the right people in the room, and I say if, because I didn't get to cover that, we will spend, we usually can get a storyboard together after scoping within 24 to 48 hours. After we finalize it, it's usually about three to four days. So we bill it, you know, we have to go through approvals because they'll be like, I don't like the name or too many reports or I need another report. And by the way, I have reports here. I didn't enter the mobility in. Mobility has to be a factor here. Very important, right? That's one more thing. If you're billing something today that's not mobile, it's time to go home, guys. <laughs> don't put it out. I don't know how else to tell you. Just save the company some money. If it's not on mobile, it's going to sit in the repository. I, that's, a, that's the best way I could put it. 2013 marks the end of the desktop. Anybody notice? I'm just speaking into the ear here. And if you go tell users you can't do it, I'm just going to repeat again. Tableau has an app. ClickView has an app. You just go and download it. You don't have to do very much. Yes, sir. John. Is Hold on, I can't hear you. Uh, go ahead, you said how? The users don't know what they are, if they, if they don't know the answers. So what, what are you asking for? Then you don't build. That's exactly what I said so earlier. That's why, then you say no. no. Then in, well, this is the thing. In corporate America, you don't say no. no. I'm very bad. I curse. I do a lot of stuff I'm not supposed to do. That's the big problem. Um, you don't say no. You tell them I suggest that you go get a new job. You're an idiot. No, you don't say that either. You say to them, <laughs> that's a joke, it's a joke. Sorry, cameraman, he's gonna do a lot of editing on this video. You say to them, if I don't, were you in my session yesterday? Nope. Okay, there's a BI blueprint that's gonna be made available, I hope, Scott, Bob. There's a sheet I gave you, you give it to them. If they can't fill it out, you tell them I need it filled out. And until they can fill it out, you tell them I can't move forward. And they always go the other way then. They always what? They just go some other way. Yeah, but that's not, you don't want to, listen, you don't want to build a failing product. Okay. It's a problem. If you build a failing product, you're going to lose anyway. So just don't put your name on it. So we should stop running so fast for the business people. Stop running so fast? We're always running so fast. Yeah, you got to take the pace back a little bit. That's right. Yep. That's a really good question. Anybody else? Any other questions? Or experiences? You can share your experience. I see a lot of faces. I don't want to do like a cartwheel on a stage. You don't want to see me cartwheel. So you better talk. Yes, sir. Um, David. Uh, what? People in the back can't hear you. Go ahead. What kind of features should you avoid in dashboards, crystal, webby? That Too many do pie charts and gauges. That don't go mobile. Um, for mobile, OK, so I'll talk. I didn't do the chart thing. Most of you when building charts, anybody know what a radar chart is? It's cute, isn't it? It has a cobweb and useless. It's a cute, useless tool. Anybody know what the candlestick chart is? Useless. Uh, you guys know or am I losing you? The candlestick is a little candlestick on every line. Looks great, right? So what I tell people is if in terms of um, components, I would have to say that stay away from the exotic charts. If you're a guy, stay away from the round objects. Um, the gauges and, and pie charts don't overdo it. Um, I'm just thinking. I don't, you know, it's not just components, it's more color choices and stuff. People just overdo it. They tend to go exotic on the, like I give you, I'll give you guys one tip. We don't, you know the, ra the rag colors, red, amber, green? We don't show green on our dashboards. It's a waste of space. And do you know what the number one complaint for that is when we say that? It's depressing. If it's all red, it looks like we're doing bad. 
I'm like, well, you know, maybe you should be doing better then, right? I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if I lack sympathy. I'm from the Caribbean, but I'm like, dude, if it's red, it's probably a problem, right? So we, we do this all the time. We tell people we don't show any greens. You're either red or amber. And we get it all the time. Miko, this is depressing. I'm like, well, get on depressed and fix the problem. Because when it's no red, then we're good. So that's one of the things. Too much green on dashboards. Happy dashboards. They, they outweigh what the red is. Um, but I don't know if there's components. Just stay away from exotic charts. You guys want me to tell you especially what to stay, from, stay away from in SAP dashboards? Anybody want to know? Where's SAP? Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let me give you my little SAP dashboard runaway list. In the container folder, don't use anything but the tab and the Swift loader. Everything else is garbage. It adds to your, I said this quick, so you better write quick, because I think SAP is somewhere around here. Um, so in, no, I actually know the people who develop it. They're not too happy about when I do this. In the chart, for, in the maps folder, don't use the maps at all. If you have a benchmark, when you export your Swift file, if it's above one megabyte, there's a high chance you're going to run into performance problems. Not the XLF file, the exported Swift file, if you want a benchmark. If it's over a meg, maybe 1.2 on a good day, you're going to run into issues. Um, in terms of connectors, um, Quaz is garbage. Query browser is Quaz within it. The Bix connector is OK. The XML data connector is pretty good. You should probably should just buy Antivia. Just thinking, I'm just I'm picture, picturing it. Container maps. Oh, formulas. Don't use Summit for counted formulas. Summit for counted formulas bring a speed dashboard to its knees. It's approved on the list. We try to get it off. It doesn't work. And I'm thinking if there's anything else on SAP dashboards. Um, one tip that our organization uses in, in, in SAP dashboards is we try not to use the Excel sheet at all for any reason. If you use a tool and don't use the Excel sheet, you're gonna not, not going to have too many performance issues. People overuse the Excel sheet. Um, anything else? If you're in BW, you should be looking at Design Studio. Also, Adam Binney yesterday asked me to stop making customers afraid by telling them Excelsius is going to die. It's not going to die. I sat him in a room and I asked him a million times in his face, and he said it's not going to die. Okay, so I'm going to put it on camera because I was online saying it's going to die. I had a coffin, a funeral. So I actually had a, a drawing that my team made of a coffin with Excelsius going in, right? And SAP paid the bill. Um, I didn't release that because it's a problem. You know, it's, it's bad news. Someone's going to come and put a bomb on my house. Um, however, he confirmed to me it's not dying. But if you're in BW, you should be looking at Design Studio. And did anybody go look at Predictive after I told you yesterday? What do you guys think about Predictive? I like predictive. And by the way, the predictive team is separate from the BI4 team. No offense to anybody else. Not saying that in a mean way. Predictive is a really good tool. Anybody download Visi? No? All right, so SAP has had a change of heart. And you guys need to take advantage of this. If, think about it. If you guys go and keep downloading the $99 software, maybe everything else will become $99. I'm just saying, you guys need to download it so we can give them encouragement. I've never seen anything in SAP for $99. Anybody else? I may not have been around as long, but I didn't even know they knew what $99 was. <laughs> Am I lying? The fact that, they, I mean, I actually asked him, I'm like, the marketing guy bumped his head. So I'm like, did we forget a comma? Did we forget a nine? Nonetheless, I think it's because Tableau has eaten our lunch. That's what I think it is. So now they have to give it to you for, for $99. So my recommendation is that if you guys go and download it like crazy, I'm going to tell SAP I think everything else should be $99. I don't think it's going to work, but we could try. As a group, we could try together. You know, get a design studio download, predictive download. All SVP people are laughing. Am I lying? I've never seen anything for $99. Have you? Yeah, I think somebody bumped their head. I think they're going to wake up soon and put like 999000 on it. So I think, I think something went wrong, but take that off the camera too. Um, anyways, I'm thinking if there's anything else. Any other questions you guys have, you can ask me about SAP dashboards. I think most of you know that I'm the dashboard queen kind of know the software. Yes, sir. What's your name? Lawrence. Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. Can't hear you. What's the max number of, uh, what's the max number of charts? Yeah. What's the max number of charts that you, you put on a dashboard without not too overcrowding? So um, in our teachings, I give you guys templates of different layouts. But if you're having beyond four charts, again, who has an iPad mini? 
Nobody has a mini? Okay, I just want to remind you that the screen size, can I see your book? That book, the book you have in your hand. Let me answer your question. What can you fit on this? Okay, so I didn't say this yesterday either. Bill mobile first, guys. Stop billing for desktop. Don't look at me and go yes and go back and put 10 charts on the screen. Always assume you're billing for this size. If you do that, your life will become a lot simpler. Is everybody clear on that? It's what, 7.34 inches now? I, I don't know, you know, it's funny. Steve Jobs said, remember, do you guys remember when Steve Jobs said the seven inch um, Android was stupid? Was anybody around? Remember he said it? He said it, right? Tim Cook got under pressure and had to put out the stupid seven, he put it 7.34 inches, but he had to put it out. All I'm saying to you guys is, this is what you're building for. These desktops and these screens are coming to an end. So when you ask me that question, what can you fit on this? And I don't want to be doing this, just to be clear. And I don't want to be doing this. Agreed? It, listen, clicking, number of clicks, this is the same thing. Ching, screenshot. This is not, I think you're going to get two swipes and one zoom. That's it. So just remember, when you ask me that, you need to think about what you're designing for. Sorry. Any other questions? Those are good questions. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Bob. Poor um, Scott deals with all my craziness. Him and poor Bob. You guys are so loving. Yeah, they do tolerate a little bit of crazy. Yeah. So I, have, I had a question around when you're talking about mini versus screen versus yeah. iPad. Is there, a, is there a solution for dynamic sizing to the different um, form factors? So here's my issue with dynamic sizing. When you use SAP dashboards, it does dynamically resize. The problem, though, is that you shouldn't be billing for dynamic resizing. Because what that, then that's what I was just saying, right? If it's dynamically resizing, something has to shrink. All the user is going to do is make it big again. Does that make sense? So I don't believe that whole dynamic sizing, I'm just not a big fan because all the person does is zoom in to see the data. So I believe you should give them to it already the way that they're going to see it. I, I don't, I don't, but SAP dashboards does dynamically resize in the browser. Yep, it dynamically resizes. Now you have to put in the code HTML size equal to 100%, just be warned. And then it dynamically resizes. You have to put it in the HTML page. So it's just a little piece of code that says size equal to 100%. Yep. Yeah, we have a business user. Oh, I like Bonita. Pretty. Yeah, thanks. Nice. So when you talk about doing a deep dive, yep. okay, and you have this little chart, are you going, where's the dive? Where so are you going? The deep dive was, uh, I don't have it here, was a report. So what I envisioned happened and what we built actually was, um, and my team built it, is that they click and they're allowed to drill down to China actually. So you can deep dive in to see exactly what the root cause analysis is. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I said, don't use these names and then give them two layers, guys. A deep dive is not two, two drill downs. Everybody clear? I'm just being clear. If you're going to use these names and make them good, they should be able to click until China to get the root cause analysis. Everybody okay with that? Just want to be clear, because some people misconstrue that. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, one thing that we've done in our development, we've, this is our first time doing a, a, a BO project. A BO project? Mm -hmm. Welcome. And uh, I know you, you recommended that you actually don't do a lot of tools um, conversations with the business. Yeah, put it a uh, little bit more. Oh, sorry, um, you. you don't Thanks. recommend doing tool uh, discussions with the business. Bus yes. Just, uh, I, I didn't go to your presentation yesterday, so I didn't see what uh, the, the content of your sheet that you give to your users. So when, when you're trying to give them the, uh, or have them focus on what exactly they, they want, how do you, uh, I mean, how do you start that conversation? I think that's one of the things that we've had an issue with as far as being able to figure out what their needs are and what the best tool is to use for. So that was exactly what I discussed yesterday mm -hmm. with the BI Blueprint. Um, mm -hmm. That session was not recorded. Mm -hmm. Don't you have a recording in the back of SAP Experts? Do you guys have one? You have a webinar with me going over it. Um, can you maybe supply him with that information? Because mm -hmm. I, I won't be able to explain it in a short question. I think you really have to see. We explain it with no technology discussion. So get, Scott has it on the back end. I think he can, he can give it to you. Yep, really good question. But stay away from technology discussions. Yep. Anybody else? These are good questions. Anybody else? I know, are we over time now? Oh no, sorry. 
Sorry about that. I mean, I'll stay here all day. I'm good. Scott's buying lunch, so I'm good. <laughs> Any other questions? Hi. Was there one in the back? Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Angelo. Any uh, tips for re-engineering a dashboard that's already on production? Talk a little bit. Any tips for re-engineering a dashboard that's already been rolled out? Yeah, and so... Then, and a follow-up to consider it for mobile, which we haven't done yet. Have, were you in my session yesterday? Yes. So one of the things that I tell people is one of the best ways to open up something you've already done is with, a de with design. And it's a little bit of a risk. If you update it and make it look better, which means, did you, so yesterday I talked about exploiting marketing interns and making them do design work, right? Or befriending a cute lady or the well-dressed guy in marketing, right? Look at the shoes and dress. If it's together every day, they have a good design sense. Take them out to lunch and smile. We talked about it yesterday. Um, it's having them do a facelift on your existing model. That's a great way to open discussion positive. Yeah, that, that's usually what we do. We tend to take it and say, here's what we think we can do going forward, right? At facelift, and a lot of times they get excited and go, okay, we're willing. But don't just show up and go, we need to talk about this again. That doesn't work out too well. It's a good question, yeah.